Alright, what's up and welcome to my Rage MP Weapons Mod installation guide. I'm gonna be going through a pretty in-depth guide on how you want to install Weapons Mods, uh, whichever one you might happen to find. And if you want to use them on Rage MP, uh, here's gonna be the tutorial for you. Alright, so when you're installing Weapons Mods or mods in general on Rage MP, there's generally two different methods that you could use. The first one is going to be directly installing the mods to your game files, which is going to be on your GTA 5 folder. And the second method is you're basically going to install it to the Rage MP folder itself, so you're not touching the base game. The one we're going to be going over today mostly is the installing it through the direct game files. I prefer installing it this way just because uh, I can have it on single player as well in, in case I want to take screenshots or anything like that uh, outside of RageMP. Since you're installing it directly to the game, it'll work whether you're on RageMP or if you're in single player. The bad thing about installing it directly to your game files is if you mess up, then basically if you don't back up whatever you just replaced, you're gonna have a broken game. You're gonna have to uh, verify your game data and do all that hassle of uh, re-downloading them. The other downside is uh, that I personally don't have, but if you play on GTA Online uh, outside of Rage MP, then you're not going to be able to play online with the modded game files or you risk getting banned there. So the upside of installing it through Rage MP is obviously that you don't have to tamper with your single player files. So that uh, if you ever wanted to play GTA Online, you could do that. You also don't risk messing anything up. Even if you do mess it really bad, then all you need to do is just re uh, reinstall RageMP, which isn't as large as uh, reinstalling your entire game. The downside is though that you won't be able to get it to work with single player, so your mods will only work on RageMP. Uh, you also can't play it if the server that you're playing on disables client-side mods. So if your server doesn't allow client-side mods loaded in through RageMP, then you won't be able to use it on that server. Alright, so moving on, we're going to be going into the actual tutorial itself. The first thing you want to do is you want to actually get the weapon mods that you want to download or you want to install. A website I recommend if you're looking for mods is gta5-mods.com. They have a lot of really good mods, including weapon mods. Uh, I think most of the mods that I have installed, uh, at least for weapon mods, I downloaded off this uh, website. So if you're looking for mods, then you want to head over here first. Alright, so on the actual website itself that you should be able to see on screen, you're going to want to click on the weapons tab, which is going to load in all of the different weapons mods available. So you're going to see like a lot of different options here. We're just going to scroll down to the bottom a bit and we're gonna find something that we like and we're gonna choose this uh, carbine rifle mod, the Colt M4A1. Uh, it looks like it's compatible for 5M as well, uh, but we're not gonna worry about that too much since we're gonna be installing this for single player and Rage MP. We just wanna click download and we wanna download the files, get that uh, finished up. And once the download is done, I'm gonna discuss on how to install it itself. Alright, so once you're finished with the download, you want to move the file to whichever area you want on your on your desktop. You want to open up OpenIV, uh, which is a tool that you should have if you're planning on modding uh, GTA 5. We're going to click on Windows, get that started up. Any second. <laughs> and uh, now that we got it started up, you, you're going to be able to see your GTA files, basically. You're going to want to go to the update folder, x64. Then you're going to see all the DLC packs that you have installed right now, which is from the base game. We're not going to worry too much about that, but you're going to want to extract the files that you downloaded. We're going to go to single player or SP. Then you're going to see all those files. What they are is basically the modded texture and model files that you're going to want to put into the game itself. So this is what's going to make uh, whichever weapon you downloaded look like that. 
All right, so we're gonna go back to the website where we downloaded it, and you're gonna see that it says patch day eight ng, which is the uh, the, the kind of path that we want to install this uh, mod at. You know, some uh, some weapon mods, you know, they suggest different places. Uh, most of them use patch day eight, uh, which is what I use for almost all of my weapon mods. So we'll just stick with that for now. All right, now that we got that figured out, we're gonna go back to Open IV. And we're gonna go back to where all our DLC packs are. We're gonna find day uh, patch day eight. We're gonna open the DLC.rpf, go to x64, go to models. Then we're gonna see uh, a weapons.rpf over there. We're gonna want to right click that and extract it. Before we do, we wanna create two new folders. We're gonna name them uh, backup just in case uh, you need to uh, fix your game if you broke something. And the second one, we're just going to name modded RPF. Uh, we're going to want to extract that. We're going to put that in our backup folder that we already made just a second ago. Once you're done extracting that, you want to copy the RPF. You copy it from the backup folder and then you copy it to your modded RPF folder. Now, the modded RPF folder is going to be where we actually modify our file. So we're not going to touch the one in backup. It's essential that you don't mess that up so that... If you need it to fix anything, then uh, you're going to have a backup file ready. Once you got your uh, modded RPF file ready, we're going to go back to OpenIV. We're going to open archive and we're going to select that RPF file that we put in the uh, modified RPF. Once we open that, you're going to be able to see it uh, down at the very bottom of the uh, kind of left side of the OpenIV screen. This is going to be the part where we're going to put in all our modded files. So since we're planning to modify the carbine model, we can see that uh, if we just find the carbine rifle model, if we double click it, then we're going to see the current model. Since I already have a mod installed, it's going to display my modded file, but that's basically supposed to show your default carbine rifle model. Now we're going to go back to our file where we kept the mod. Again, we're going to go to the SP folder, then we're going to turn on edit mode. Now, once you turn on edit mode, you want to be careful because any changes you make, it's going to be permanent. You're not going to be able to reverse it, just undo it. No, it's going to be permanent. So make sure you be careful when, once you have uh, edit mode on. So we're going to go back to our folder. We're just going to select everything. We're just going to move it over to the uh, open IV. Now it's not going to say anything, but it's going to successfully copy and replace everything. Once that's done, we're going to right click our weapons RPF, then we're going to close archive. All right, so next thing we want to do, we want to access our file explorer and we're going to go to the directory where we put our modded RPF file. Then on a second instance of file explorer, we're going to access archive fix, which you should have already. If you haven't, you should download it first. Link should be included in the description of the video. It's going to be very important if you're ever planning to mod again. Uh, we're going to access that and have both windows on standby like so. Once we have both windows ready, we're just going to want to drag our weapons RPF onto the archive fix executable. We're going to let that do its thing and then we're just going to press whatever to close the window once it's done. Once we're finished with that, we want to open up OpenIV again. We're going to go back to our main directory, going back to update x64 and then going to our list of DLCs. We're going to go back to patch day 8, which was where we took the weapon.rpf uh, from the beginning. We're going to make sure edit mode is still turned on and then we're just going to drag that over. So we're going to replace the original weapons.rpf with our now modded weapons.rpf. Alright, since I already have my own mods installed, I'm not going to actually do that. But once you finish dropping that, you want to go back to your uh, archive fix. Then we're going to open on a second instance once more. We're going to go to our installation path for GTA 5. For me, since I'm playing on Steam, I got that in my uh, Steam. Then I'm just going to go to common and then I'm going to find GTA 5. Then once you have found the uh, GTA 5.exe and whatever you want to go to update, then you want to go back to x64 just like how you did in OpenIV. You want to find patch day 8 and then you want to find the RPF file. 
Now you're gonna drag that into the archive fix. Since I already have mine archived, it's not gonna want to do anything in particular, but then it should show the same text as before if you have an unarchived RPF and you're archiving it. Once you have that done, that's pretty much it for the installation process. And now you should have the modded weapon in your game, so we're gonna test that out soon after this. Alright, so as you can see, we are now in single player, and if you check our weapons wheel, we have all of uh, well, all of my modded weapons in there. Uh, since we didn't actually replace the weapons RPF file in my game with the one that we just installed, uh, we're not gonna see it in the carbine rifle slot. But I actually have that model installed for the carbine Mark II, so you're gonna be able to see how that looks like on screen now. Alright, now that we know that the weapons mods work in single player, we're gonna load up Rage MP next and see how it shows up on a live server. Alright, so we're on a live Rage MP server. We're on Unity RP right now, which is a Indonesian RP server. But I'm not gonna go into that too much. But as you can see, you, we can already see that the uh, the weapon mod that we had installed earlier it's already visible on our back so if your server has a uh what's it called has weapon models visible on your person then it's still gonna work you can see we got the smg mark ii on the side which i have a vector model instead and we have the pistol point 50 which i have a glock model for so when we pull them out they also work perfectly fine you can see the point 50 here the carbine mark ii which had the skin that we installed earlier and we have the SMG Mark II. So you can see that uh, installing it this way, it works for both single player and Rage MP. It should be all fine. Just remember that whenever you, uh, whenever you modify anything, you need to archive fix it. And the reason that we don't uh, modify it directly is because we can't uh, run the archive fix script when the RPF that we're trying to fix is inside another RPF. So that's why we want to get them out first and uh, use the archive fix script one by one. So that should be it for the um, for the modding tutorial. Thanks for watching until the end. Uh, if, you, if this helped you out, then make sure you support the channel. I'm going to be making a few more videos on moddings and how I install all of my mods since I have a couple of them. But this is just going to be the first one out of a few. So if you did enjoy it, thank you uh, for watching. Make sure you support the channel. Alright, peace out.